Um, as mentioned, my name is Marcus Sandel, and I serve as the Neighborhood Career Coordinator with the Career Services Network. Yes, a super long title that pretty much says that I help students figure out um, what they want to do at MSU and then how to be most successful after they graduate. And so today's conversation is going to be about um, professionalism and managing your digital brand. I thought it was very cute to uh, linked into success and get it. And so we'll be talking about professionalism, kind of big picture, and then really narrowing down to how we leverage social media um, to help you all connect, network, and prepare for your next step and many steps after. Um, as we know, um, networking is a huge part of being a professional. I also argue that one of the biggest benefits of being a Spartan is the network that comes along with it. And so being able to leverage that network, leverage relationships, and as you move forward, stay connected will be critical as you all become the outstanding professionals. I know you all are, truly are. So with that being said, I think it's very important that as we begin to transition and as everyone transitions into this next step, thinking intentionally about, well, what does it mean for me to be a professional? And so professionalism, just for today's conversation, the skill, good judgment, and polite behavior that is expected of a person or from a person who is trained to do a job well. Describe a certain type of behavior in a workplace based on our values, understanding um, our professional roles, and lastly, demonstrated through the behaviors of a person and group, such as one's appearance or conversation. It kind of creates a standard for how we should behave in a certain space. I talk to a lot of students, and I ask this question very often, are you a professional? And about half the room typically raises their hand, and they say, well, you know what, when I'm in class, at my job, but what about in other spaces? And I would argue that everyone is a professional depending on their role. The question is, what are the expectations in this space? What are the expectations for you in that role? And so as you all transition into your next position, I'm thinking about what does it mean for me to, me to, for me to be <laughs> the true professional I am in this space? Um, the expectation of a social worker may be different than a a Fortune 500 company as far as what you wear, how you act, how you engage, how you speak. And so thinking about those things are very important. Now, expecting greatness through professionalism. I've asked you a couple questions. Again, it goes back to the idea, we have to think about what professionalism is and then the different pieces of it. Um, I love these series, the series of questions because it really pulls to the, the latter question of what's a digital brand. And so I think historically, when we think professionalism, we think, okay, well, I'm in a suit, I'm in a tie. I'm walking nicely. I speak very proper and very clear. Yes, I'm a professional. However, as we're transitioning and moving into a more of a digital age, you're contacted and viewed and connected with a lot more. People can see you when you're here and they can check up on you when you're not through social media, through online platforms. And so the conversation of the digital brand is becoming a, a greater talking point especially in the career services world, because we're seeing that it's becoming a huge influence um, in whether people are getting hired, not hired, and how they're being perceived. And so when we think about the digital brand, your digital brand, um, sometimes can be seen as your alter ego, the real you, right? You go to work, you dress nice, you speak nice, you go home, hey, <laughs> team turn up, right? The, the real you or how you look when the camera's not on. And so for the employer, it's kind of good to know that. And I, I know after five o'clock, this is what they're going to do. And so, or the assumption, right? And so we have to begin thinking about now that people can see us in different spaces, pictures, um, Instagram, Snapchat, dot, dot, dot. We have to be intentional in protecting our brand. There's also the maybe deciding factor of why or why you not get a position. We're hearing that more and more. Um, a couple years ago, a couple times, but now people are doing, they're Googling your pictures, they're Googling who you are, doing a background check, official ones, but they're also asking around, looking for your profiles. Um, many times we hear students say, well, you know, my profile's private, but your friends isn't. And so when you get tagged in a picture and they're in the same circle, you can remove that tag, that picture is still there. Um, I find crazy pictures of myself and I have to go in like, oh no, no, because Google Plus is real. And now you can upload a picture and all of a sudden your picture's online and you didn't even know it was up there. And so being intentional about going in and looking and saying, well, how am I being portrayed to the world around me? I would strongly recommend everyone Google yourself. Google, type in your name, first and last, see what comes up, go to images, see what comes up. Because again, that, that lens or that view sometimes we think is, well, I've created a private space. Um, a lot of times we also create profiles that have different names, right? And I, I, I also did the same thing. I'll, not Marcus Sanderlin, John Timothy. 
However, um, if you're not careful with the pictures and images you're loading or you have available, you're not quite sure who comes in contact with those images. And lastly, um, it's more important now than ever. And so technology is not going anywhere. And so as we think about how we're branding ourselves, thinking about, well, what am I putting online? What are others putting online? And how do I safeguard myself professionally? Now, with that being said, we have to also use social media to our benefit. So leveraging social media. We have Facebook, there's Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, there's Pinterest, there's different sites that do different things, right? And so many times we fall in the space where we see LinkedIn is the professional space and Facebook is my fun space. I would challenge everyone to begin thinking about, although we do want to create that work-life balance, how do we begin to safeguard what we do put on Facebook? And I don't say that to be intrusive, but I say that because for you all, you're going into a field where the, your actions, what you say, what you do, are magnified by those who see it. So the group over here was made, brought an example of you're in a grocery store and you're yelling at somebody, you're, ah, 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 and your client walks up like, oh my goodness, Cheryl, how could you? <laughs> right? But you're thinking, you know, that's that one situation, but little do you know, they're Snapchatting. Snap, Tidja goes crazy. So work, social work goes crazy. Oh no, right? And now <laughs> you're a trending topic. Whoops. And so thinking about or remembering that these different things are happening. And so Facebook, Safeguard, Twitter, in regards to using Twitter, and I would recommend honestly using all these things for your professional development. May I put that there? There are so many groups on Facebook that can connect you to other professionals that are doing great work. Twitter, I would recommend using Twitter if you're not to stay abreast of trends. If you use Twitter correctly, you can follow different people that are doing things in the field that are doing, going very well. And so many times from the professional lens, we see a lot of individuals, companies using Twitter to stay hip. Um, you're going to interviews and they may say, well, what type of uh, media are you using to stay abreast of the field? Well, I'm involved in so many organizations, but I also follow these individuals and bloggers that keep me um, aware of things happening in different parts of the country. I also contribute to this space. Great. It allows you to also be dynamic and give back to that space professionally. Instagram, Snapchat, just know Instagram and Snapchat is real. And then LinkedIn. We're going to talk about LinkedIn in depth. Um, how many of you all have a LinkedIn page? How many of you all have logged into your LinkedIn page in the last two months? Good, good. I have room. A couple hands went down. It's okay. Um, I ask that because LinkedIn is also transitioning a bit. So the profile is a little bit different. And so how you use it, how you search, um, it's not the same as that was. Personally, I like it. I was on last night playing with it. It's a great tool, but like any tool, the more you use it, the better you are at it. And so I would challenge you all as you're thinking about opening up your professional space, get in there and get to work. So question, again, conversation. What strategies would you recommend for managing your digital brand? I gave you some things that could happen. You're a Kroger, hey, all of a sudden it's crazy now. So what are strategies you recommend or you would think on recommendations? I just have a couple. There's no, uh, there's no foolproof way of preventing things from going up, but you can kind of caution your activity, change names, or put up uh, privacy settings. A couple of things. Next. So first, clean it up, right? So I would recommend just go back and <laughs> realize you had the experience. And so go back and look through what may have happened, what pictures may be online, what may already be on your pages and remove them, personal opinion. Just go ahead and remove them, take them down if at all possible. Um, because you wanna put your best foot forward. From there, know how each tool can and should be used. Um, I think it's very important because it also can give you idea of where things might be and how you can manage your digital um, profile other places, right? And so managing digital brand isn't necessarily just making sure bad things don't go up. It's also making sure you're a part of the good things that do go up. And so when you do come across a great article, when you do say, wow, MSU ranked here for doing this, post, right? Go green. And so you wanna also be a contributor to that professional space. Be aware of who you associate with. That is very, 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 very important in regards to LinkedIn and especially um, because people can see your contacts. And so um, when you log on, you see Everyone's been on, so you should kind of know. You see people you are second, third, kind of related to, connected to, and so you want to make sure you're aware of who you're adding. Um, for me, I have, I'm not going to lie, there are several people that are just in limbo because I'm not quite sure who that person is. And so 
being aware of who's adding you. Your friend from back in the day, day? Mm -mm -mm. I will not be your, uh, your catalyst in the professional space. Let's see that profile build a little bit, buddy, and then we'll have a conversation. Um, if we have no friends in common, no friends in common, and I don't know your name, and there's no message with that add-on or that connect post, mm -mm -mm. not today. And so we wanna make sure we're managing that space as well. And lastly, um, be careful of what you post, of course, um, being aware that when you post things, the assumption will be that you agree with that post, you agree with the message of that post, the content of it, and so be aware of that. And this is the truth, actually. Stay away from drama. And I put this on there because drama sometimes can be fun. Don't be connected to it. And so that goes to the previous post. Be careful what you post. All right, so LinkedIn basics. We're just gonna kind of hop through LinkedIn, just give you a couple things to think about and make sure you're kind of aware of what's happening. And so LinkedIn, first thing, um, Create your profile and then get connected. Spartan Links, MSU Alumni Association. Um, if you're connected to other majors or colleges, make sure you're adding and building your network. Don't just get on LinkedIn and say, great, I made it, thanks. Actually invest into the space. And so these are two spaces, Spartan Links, huge. MSU alum, I wanna say it's almost 55. It was 55 and I think it's a little dip, just being transparent. However, being connected to that many people is a great thing. And you wanna make sure you're continuing to build. Your network should serve as a catalyst for you, but also other people that are trying to get connected. LinkedIn is a, a two-way street, but it's also kind of a, a highway with a number of different ways to get on and off the street. And so you should be leveraging your contacts to meet more people, and they should be leveraging, leveraging you to meet more people. So this is kind of how the homepage looks, as you can see. Um, you see the information, I use a pointer, but I can't. It looks like Facebook, for those who are and so, I'll go back to the mic for a second. Right over here you see information and then you have your stream. So your new, your kind of a news feed, that's where the posts kind of go. And honestly, that's where you do see how people are moving professionally. So if I get online, like last night, I was going through my profile and I saw someone post a picture that was inappropriate. I said, oh, wait a minute now, who is this? So I went down a little further, start again, went a little further, start again, removed. I don't play that. Um, because you again have to manage those connections because if someone gets on and sees that person connected to me, then it's, well, how are you all connected? And so I'm really cautious about that. And as you all rise as professionals, I would argue the same thing for you all. You're managing your brain. So how people see you is not just who you are, but who you're around. Searching. So when you wanna search, that's the bar right there. Searching is a very powerful tool as you think about meeting different people in different companies, finding jobs, et cetera. And so if you're applying for a job, search for people that work in that industry work for that company, and then contact them. Feel free to reach out, Spartans will help Spartans. And again, like I said in the very beginning, leverage that Spartan connection. So you can search for people, jobs, and plenty of things. Just for today's conversation, I'm gonna focus on jobs and people. When you search for a job, boom, type the job in, you're gonna see, yep, you're gonna see the different types of jobs. And so if you go back to this page, you'll see a general search, MSW, right? And then you see the job post up, and right below the people post, um, the people pop up. So you're going to see, based on what you search, the industry you search, the degree, the background, the school you search, will then bring up different options you can then search from. But for jobs, you see a number right here. Now, as we know, we're applying for jobs. One of the critical things you want to do is make sure our resumes align with the job description. Your resume should get edited, this is the career services guy talking, prior to submitting each application. The reason for that is although most of the language will be similar, there will be some slight differences. I almost guarantee it. There's no two jobs that are the same. And so you want to make sure the language sounds like you should be working there and nowhere else. And so my recommendation is to go on here, read the job description. Boom. Go through and highlight buzzwords, highlight keywords, words that are standing out, skills you want to emphasize. That way when you apply for the job, your resume is A1. And so it's a quick way to kind of look and see, well, what should I be looking for? What should I be talking about? It also provides some talking points in your interview. So when they ask you, what are three um, skills you have or what are three of your strengths, right? I would argue you should use things they're looking for. If you're good at things that relate to the job, mention those things. And so we want to be intentional about using this as an opportunity to not only find jobs, but secure them. So I'm all about the search, but I'm also about getting paid. And so we wanna make sure you are being strategic in that regard. 
next to people. And so you can refine by a number of different categories, a number of different filters that you search for people. People are great, again, to figure out one, people want to connect with in the field, but also people in the industry, people that work in places you want to work, um, finding mentors, connecting points, et cetera. And so when you get on, you can pretty much do this new system. You should be able to pull out and dig through a number of different things. It's kind of limited. The premium allows you to do that. But the basics, full profiles, maximum 1,000 um, per search, which is great, and the basic search result filters. And so you can use those filters intentionally to figure out the best person to connect with. Once you find that person, as you see right here, connect button. You want to reach out and connect, simple as that. Now, with that being said, remember what I mentioned earlier. I mentioned you don't want to just hit that button and say, cool story, great. You want to make sure you give some type of background. How are you doing? I, we went to MSU, um, we're related in this way. I would love to contact you or connect with you in this way. You want to give them something to connect with you with because they don't know you and you don't have a lot of similar contacts, they might decline your request. If too many people decline your request, they begin to limit what you can do. It's a great feature for LinkedIn because if you hop in and say, add me, add me, add me, add me, add me, Facebook syndrome, what then happens is they say, wait a minute, no, <laughs> we're going to shut you down. And so it's about being strategic. So invite people, um, be intentional about it, take your time with it, don't invite a bunch of people because if you're strategic, as you meet different people, your network will grow. You go to interviews, your network will grow. You go to these spaces, conferences, your network will grow. I would argue that you all, being that most people are on LinkedIn, should be adding each other. So that way, when you leave, you at least got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 people in your connection that you can actually speak to. And so that's one of the misconceptions about LinkedIn is the more people you're connected with, the better. Mm -mm -mm. If you can't speak to those contacts, like some people have like 10,000 friends on Facebook. There's no way you've even met 10,000 people. So how can you have 10,000 friends? And so you want to make sure you keep your LinkedIn profile intentional. All right. I made sure to be um, strategic to make sure I time them at the very end. So drawing to inclusion, protect your brand. Nothing is private. Um, that's, one of the biggest misconceptions we make in professionalism is we have the private things. You can limit your privacy, but there's always a will, there's a way. And so the more we can do to protect that brand, the better. Be yourself and be genuine. I'm a huge advocate for that. Be who you are. Don't put on airs. Don't be fake. Don't be false. What you post, let it be how you feel. Who you are, let it be you. Um, water your seeds. What I mean by that is that you begin to develop your network, don't just add people in and forget about them. Make sure you're connecting, talking to different people, following up. If you see on LinkedIn, you can say, oh, congratulations. Don't just say congratulations, write a note. Hey, you know, we need to connect soon. Congratulations on being in your position for one year. I look forward to a conversation. Best, right? It's just like the, the, the foundational pieces of networking, but it's so important and many times, we are, we're lulled by this idea that because social media, the same effort doesn't have to go into it. And that's not true. We want to work even harder because our social media space sometimes is overlooked. And so we want to make sure we're watering our seed. Leverage your resources. Use online platforms to stay abreast of what's happening in the industry. Use the people you're connecting with to stay abreast in the industry. Use professional staff, faculty, your teachers, those who are teaching you right now, add them on LinkedIn. I, all the teachers of my master's program, <laughs> The professors, they're connecting me on LinkedIn. Why? It's a way for them to see what I'm doing, but also for me to see what they're doing. Because typically they're doing really good stuff. I want to know what they're doing so I can be aware. You also never know what type of opportunities, projects, programs you can jump on just by being connected and seeing what they're posting. And lastly, enjoy the journey. I think when we get in these conversations of professionalism and you're graduating and you're going to the work world, ah, it's, it's heavy and stressful. I mean, I was kind of listening in to some of the conversations we're interviewing. You're interviewing. <laughs> Sheesh, it's heavy, right? And sometimes we get caught up in the end goal. I would challenge you, enjoy the journey. Your interview process, the people you meet, the connections you make, they're valuable. I can't count how many times I've talked to somebody that said, well, you know, I interviewed with this place and I didn't get the job, but then my next job, it was the same person I interviewed with and I got that one with benefits. And so those small things, you interview with somebody, do you mind follow with you? Add them on LinkedIn. Enjoy the process. And so I'm a huge quote person. Normally I have a lot more quotes in my presentation, but I kind of gave you the, the
a quick to the point, but excellence is never an accident. It is the result of high intention, sincere effort, intelligent direction, skillful execution, and the vision to see obstacles as opportunities. Um, I love this quote because it speaks to this idea of excellence, but it also speaks to the effort it takes to get to that point. As you are transitioning into the professional spaces or moving into your new roles, um, strive to be excellent, but realize that there's things you have to do along the way. Again, it goes back to enjoy the journey, put your best foot forward, protect your digital brand, and you'll be great. And so with that being said, I'm done. I don't know why it's doing that. I apologize. But feel free to email me, contact me, connect with me. I'm definitely an advocate and a resource for your success. Um, for those who are graduating, congratulations. You actually can use career services two years after graduation. A lot of people did not know that. So I would strongly recommend, make sure that resume is together. Come by, see us. We can do mock interviews. We can do prep work. We can do the different things you're needing or not quite sure about as you're applying and moving to the next step. With that being said, any question for me in my remaining four minutes? Mm -hmm. So the typical process, you would get on Handshake, which is our online platform. You would go to appointments, just log in and make an appointment. You can also go to drop-ins. We have drop-ins Monday through Friday. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it is 3 to 5 p.m. in Student Services Building. And then on Friday, it's 10 to 12, Student Services Building, a.m. Um, if you have any questions about making appointments or having troubles, I always recommend connect with me, shoot me an email, say, hey, you know, I'm trying to get in to see someone. What are your thoughts? Can I connect with you or someone else? And then we'll make sure that, make sure that happens. So I always ask um, those who are transitioning, what are you all most excited about moving forward? What? Making that money, yeah. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Enjoy life. Yes, yes. How about this table? We were all most excited about. Um, before after graduation, mm -hmm. I think just like the um, the opportunity there are available mm. and kind of like I'm excited to say like the unknown. Yeah. Yes, awesome, <laughs> awesome. This table. <laughs> right. <laughs> mm. That's how they get you, right? Yes, yes. Awesome. So, um, as you all transition again, um, stay connected, use your resources, use the campus, leverage your network. I'm so excited for your next steps. Thank you for your time. Take care. Thank you.